question is to uh, Mr. Bokros. Uh, you talked about the fact that uh, some Hungarians have negative feelings towards the European Union. <laughs> uh, can you give some causes of this attitude? Uh, there are seemingly many reasons why some people may feel uh, disenfranchised or disappointed by uh, the European Union. But I must admit that uh, most of this uh, disappointment is uh, uh, the result of uh, unrealistic expectations and uh, uh, unrealistic promises made by the, by the domestic elite. Uh, one uh, important uh, uh, point here is, is uh, agricultural subsidies. You know, the, the European Union is uh, spending more than 40% of its own uh, uh, budgetary resources uh, on uh, income support for farmers. Uh, Hungary is a, is a very important uh, agricultural uh, producer. Uh, it has extremely fertile soil and so far, before climate change, it also had a uh, good climate. And now it is uh, probably uh, changing to the wrong direction. So in Hungary at least most people are aware of this and uh, don't want to see too much climate change. But in any case, uh, uh, people had uh, uh, the, the expectation that a Hungarian farmer would get exactly the same amount of income support as a French or a Belgian or a German or whoever uh, in, in the European Union. And that turned out to be not the case. You know that until the, the very end of this first seven year uh, uh, budgetary cycle, uh, basically one farmer with the same amount of uh, arable land would get roughly 40% of, of the income support compared to what a Western European farmer uh, gets. And then it created resentment because it uh, uh, proved that uh, within the European Union now we have uh, uh, first class uh, citizens and uh, second class uh, citizens. Uh, it's uh, unjustified, I must say, uh, to a great extent because uh, uh, in many respects uh, as a consequence of the political changes, we have a very, very fragmented land tenure system in Hungary. So, so in Hungary, you don't have that type of concentration of land, which would make uh, uh, commercial farming that efficient as it needed to be. But as a consequence, income support per se would be even more wasteful than in case of uh, Western European uh, uh, producers. But nevertheless, uh, this is the perception. So that uh, uh, Hungarians are unduly penalized uh, by this dual system of uh, agricultural subsidies. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, if you measure uh, the validity and uh, value of the European Union by the amount of uh, transfer uh, a country can get, then obviously Hungary is uh, once again not uh, the top beneficiary of the system because it has relatively high income level and, and per capita income, so some of the other countries for historic reasons and for other reasons get more. So if we look at the European Union as a zero-sum game, if I gain and you lose, or you gain if I lose, then obviously you always have people who would say that this is not up to the expectations, but uh, uh, on, uh, on uh, both uh, economic and, uh, and political grounds uh, the lady who me on this left already. Uh, I, am, I am really not uh, even saying that this uh, present system of, uh, of agricultural subsidies or whatever has the biggest problem of not subsidizing enough the Hungarian agriculture. For me, the point is that it is subsidizing too much the Western agriculture. I would love to see the whole subsidy part of the European Union shrinking and to see the European common budget, which is uh, quite a large budget, I'm a member of the budgetary committee in the European Parliament, we will have the second reading of the uh, 2010 uh, budget next year in uh, Strasbourg, and uh, it's a 133 billion euro budget, 40% of which 
finances the past rather than the future. We spend very little on research and development, on higher education, on many other things. Where Europe should have uh, uh, probably much more uh, benefit uh, uh, out of uh, what you will spend rather than uh, in case of agriculture, where this agricultural subsidy system is closely connected uh, to the outer <coughs> walls of the European Union in terms of maintaining the, the, the very high level of custom duties, which, for example, uh, stop uh, uh, the European Union uh, from helping the third world countries uh, in terms of uh, offering them more of its own market. But obviously, if I say this to a French peasant or farmer, uh, who would say, bloody mokros. Uh, <laughs> same way as Hungarians said uh, 14 years ago. And I should go to hell, according to his views. So as you can see, we have different views on the usefulness of the European Union. Well, perhaps after a certain period of time, we will have a Bokros package for uh, the European Union as well. You better believe that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will go to uh, Nanta, I think, if there is... Uh... Yes. If not, really to what I said before. But okay, I want but if there are other uh, persons who want to come in, you are free to... Uh, because we will not go on for long.